and praise the Lord. Welcome to Victory in Jesus. Today is a wonderful day. I don't know where you are right now viewing this program, but I'm telling you something. Today was a gorgeous day. The sun was out. I mean, it was really, really nice. I hope you did go outside and get some natural vitamin Ds. Today, we're going to talk about God is well able. God is able to heal, to deliver, and to set free, and to restore. So before I go any further, let me just pray for us. Father, in the name of Jesus, I cover us with your blood in Jesus' holy name. I cover our ear gates, Lord, so we can receive your word. And as we receive your word, Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that your word will be on the inside of us like a spring of living water, detoxing us, washing us from every unwanted disease and infection in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your word that is alive in us in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand praise because he's worthy and he's worthy to be praised in the name of Jesus. Like I said, today's topic is God is well able to deliver you. God is well able to deliver me. There is things going on right now in the world that would make you feel like there's no God, that would make you feel like you're stuck. But you know, this word, this sermon comes out of Numbers 13, 17 to 28. And you probably know the story. It's talking about Joshua and Caleb and the um, 10 spies. Joshua 1, Caleb 2, and then the 10 spies 12 that Moses, the Lord told Moses to pick from the 12 tribes of Egypt, of Israel, so they can go, after the Lord brought them out of Egypt, he told them to pick 12 tribes out of the Israelites so that they can go and spy out the promised land. And of course, they went and they spied and they saw the blessings. But one thing scares them, they saw giants, the giants of Anak, the giants that were so big, they said that they look like grasshoppers in the giant size. So they came back to Moses and Aaron and the other Israelites and they begin to mourn and they begin to wail and they begin to murmur and they begin to say, we are not able to go up against them because we saw the giants of Anak and we were like grasshoppers in their sight. And so the people the Bible said in Numbers 13, the people cried all night, wailing, would to God you had left us in Egypt. Would to God you had left, up, left, left us in, wil in the wilderness so we could die. Instead, you brought us out here to be killed by the sword. And they murmured and they forgot the Red Sea. They forgot the manna. They forgot the blessings that God had done. They had forgot. All they, all they looked was, was what they heard. And you know what? It comes down to this. You and I have to be careful who we listen to. You and I have to be careful who we get our messages from. Because we can be on the mountaintop and then something can come and just drop you way down in the valley. And just when you was about to get a breakthrough, some kind of news come and can just knock you flat down, back down to square one, to where it feels as if nothing happened in the first place. When God is well able to heal, God is well able to deliver you, and God is well able to restore you. And I say all that to say this, when God gives us a, an assignment and God says, this is what I want you to do, he gave these people the assignment and he said, you are able, be of good courage. I am with you. That's what you and I need to do. You and I need to believe God. You and I need to trust him. You and I need to know that he is well able to deliver you. He is well able to restore whatever is going on with you. He is able to redeem in the name of Jesus everything that the conquer worm has stolen from you. All we have to do is keep our eyes on the Lord and trust him, knowing that he who has begun a good work in you and a good work in me is going to continue to do that until it is fulfilled in us. Now, here it is. 
Caleb says, no, no, no. They are like clay in our hands. We got God on our side. They don't have our God on their side. We got the almighty God on our side. We can go in there and we can crush them and take that promised land. But the people didn't want to listen to Caleb. They didn't want to listen to Joshua. All they wanted to do was to listen to those 10 spies who brought bad report to them. Now, Isaiah 53 starts out, whose report shall you believe? You know what? There's a song that says, whose report shall you believe? We shall believe the report of the Lord. Whose report? I will believe the report of the Lord. If the Lord tells me to do this, and I know that I know that I know it's the Lord, I will listen. I will say, Lord, be my strength. Be my guide and walk me through whatever it is you're telling me to walk through. Because if it's you who is telling me to do this, you are well able in the name of Jesus. And so I said, um, be careful of who you're listening to. Be careful who you're getting your news from. Be careful of the messages that are coming to you. Because in, in other words, you have something going on with you. And the Lord said he's going to heal you and he's going to raise you. Up. And he told you this, that he's going to heal you right here on earth. Not when you're raptured up, but right here on earth, he's going to heal you. You sense it, you know it, he visited you probably in a dream, probably somewhere in your now the Holy Spirit visited you and told you, I am going to heal your infirmities. And if people around you know of your sicknesses, and if people around you know of your diseases, be careful who you are surrounded by, because whenever they are Done, when, when, when they're done with you, you will find yourself succumb to not being healed, succumb to death when the Lord wants to raise you up. So these Israelites, they begin to murmur, they begin to complain. And the Lord says, you know what, let me just wipe them all out. Let me wipe the entire Israelites out and then raise up a greater nation. But Moses and Aaron fell down on their faces and begin to to cry out to the Lord and say, dear Lord, don't do that. Because, of course, you know what the other people in the other land, you know what Egypt, the Egyptians are going to say, you know what this, the, 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 the Hittites and, and the Perizzites, you know what they're all going to say. They're going to say, you couldn't handle these people. You brought them out, and because you couldn't handle them, you killed them. So, dear Lord, only the ones, only the ones who came against you, only the ones who, who refused to believe your word, them you can handle. But don't, don't, don't wipe out the entire nation just because 10 spies were foolish enough to bring bad report. And so once the Lord was able to remove them, remove them from the, from the rest of the Israelites, things were a little better. It didn't continue better the whole time because there was constant murmuring and constant complaining. This is what I would like to say to us. Be careful of your murmuring. Be careful of your constant complaining. Be careful of your constant griping. And learn to worship God in the midst of your storm. Learn to lift up your hands and learn to say, Father God, just like Job said, though you slay me, yet will I praise you. Let you yet will I worship you. You are my God. You are my king in the name of Jesus. You are Jehovah Rapha, my healer. You heal my disease. You restore me. And you set me free in the name of Jesus. And for that, Lord, I want to say thank you. Thank you for your goodness in my life. Thank you for your mercies in my life. In Jesus' name. Now, if you, if you, you know, here in um, Numbers 14 and verse 9, he said, only rebel not ye against the Lord. Rebel not against the Lord. Don't say, well, you know, it's been so long. Uh, you know, I've been going through this stuff for so long and, and, and I've been um, I'm believing God for so long and I've been praying and, and I've been, 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 you know, seeking him and, and, and he hasn't answered me. And, and so don't rebel against the word of God. Continue to worship him. The Bible continues to say in Numbers 14 and 9, fear the um. Fear we the people of the land. Don't fear the people of the land, for they are bred. 
to us. In other words, re rebel not against the Lord, neither fear the people of the land, neither fear those that are bringing bad news to you, neither fear those that are telling you you're never going to rise up. Don't fear them, just continue to worship God, continue to praise God because he's Alpha and Omega in your life. They said, we're not going to fear them because they are bread for us. Their defense is departed from them. And the Lord is with us. God is with you no matter what you're going through right now. And no matter what it looks like, fear God. Trust God. He is your deliverer and he is going to bring you through. But unless you get a praise on your lips, morning, noon, and night, giving him the glory, giving him the honor, giving him the praise, you'll never get through. You have to say, Father God, I'm going to continually worship you. I'm going to continually praise you. You are my Jehovah Rapha, my healer. You are my Jehovah Jireh, my provider in the name of Jesus. You are my Jehovah Paracletus, my helper in the name of Jesus. And as you and I begin to lift up hands and not allow the situation or the circumstances to overwhelm us, God will bring you through. You know, they said the Israelites wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. 40 years they wandered because they were in disbelief, because they murmured, because they complained, because they wanted to go back. Philippians 3, 14 and 15 says, I don't look behind, but I press toward the mark of the high calling through Christ Jesus. You can't run forward, keep looking back. If you keep looking back, you're going to run into something. You're going to have an accident. You have to continue to, fr to press forward. Pressing forward means change the, the words of your mouth, change your ear gaze, who you're listening to, who you're getting your report from, change a lot of things about yourself. Sometimes you may have to leave some of your friends behind. Sometimes you may have to leave some of your loved ones behind. Believe you me, I'm not telling you nothing strange. I have had to do this myself. I've had to turn my back even on family members because they were so negative. Everything came out of their mouth was negative. Oh, well, well, well. And they would gripe and complain and, and they would just look at, look at the downward instead of looking at God. They say, well, you know, this happened to so-and-so. I know so-and-so was going through the same thing that you were going through and they didn't rise up from it. And so, you know, maybe, no, 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 no. There's no maybe. The God I serve, there's no maybes about him. He's the Alpha and he's the Omega in Jesus' name. And you and I, we just have to believe that God is faithful. Here it is, we are in a pandemic right now. It's in the entire world. The entire nation is covered with this coronavirus. People are filled with fears. Praise God for the vaccines that are going out. And if you haven't go, gotten yours and the Holy Spirit tells you go and get it, I would encourage you to go and get it. But people are in constant fear. People are like, what if I, oh, and they, they're complaining, God, be a edge of protection round about me. I'm not naive that the, that the coronavirus is not here. I'm not naive that people have gotten sick from it. We have to be careful. You know, we know that there's so many people that have lost their lives. And, 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 you know, for that, it is very heartbroken. There's many family right now mourning and, 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 and grieving and crying over loved ones that, that was full of life and, and is suddenly gone. And, you know, sometimes when I look at the news, I see individuals talking about their loved ones and, and they cry and it just saddened me. Just, it just break my heart to see that that loved one that, that is in a picture that looks so healthy is suddenly not there and it's like how do they sleep at night you know I, I, they probably is filled with grief but that's that's where you and I come in you and I we need to pray for the grieving people that are left to grieve over their loved ones we need to lift them up we need to tell God God remember them in the name of Jesus Touch their hearts, O God, in the name of Jesus. Bring joy back to them, O God, in the name of Jesus. Let them know that their loved ones is, is, a, is in a much better place. Even though we'd rather them for them to be here, they're in a better place. But right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we who which are alive and well, we cover ourselves with an 
with the blood of Jesus, we, we just put an edge round about ourselves. And you speak to yourself. You prophesy to yourself. You say, no evil will come near my dwelling place. And you have to believe in the, in the name of Jesus. When you wake up in the morning, you believe God. Listen here, I'm rising and I'm shining under the tabernacle of the Almighty God. I'm getting up in the name of Jesus. I am going to fulfill every assignment that the Holy Spirit has given me in the name of Jesus. Lord, I belong to you. You belong to me. I will worship you all the day long as I go about doing all that you have called me to do in the name of Jesus. No setback. I declare and I decree in the name of Jesus. I am covered under your blood. I am healed from all disease. And you have to go on and on and on. Keep speaking positive. Um, keep speaking prophe prophecy of healing. No matter what it looks like, it may look like it's not changing. Don't, don't be fooled by what it looks like. Your breakthrough could very well be around the corner, just waiting on you to continue to give God the glory and give God the praise in the name of Jesus. Now these spies... They came with their evil report and they had all the Israelites filled with fear that, that they were not going to see the promised land. And they wanted to either stay in the wilderness or go back to Egypt because they thought Egypt was really the promised land. And of course, the Holy Spirit had to clean out the, the negativity out of the camp before God can really reach their hearts. Sometimes you have to say, you know what, I love you, but not today. Not today, because I'm on a mission. The Lord has set me in a mission to either pray for myself or to pray for a loved one, and I can't afford to shower myself with negativity. And they may say to you, but you know what, that person don't look... Whatever it is, God has given me assignment. My assignment is to continue to pray. My assignment is to continue to lift up the name of the Lord. My assignment is to believe the word of God that he who belongs, be, he who um, have begun a good work in me is going to continue it till the end in the name of Jesus. Matthew 28 Matthew 11 and verse 28 to 30. It says, come on to me. Come on to me. Bring it to me in the name of Jesus. Sometimes I, I don't know about you, but I found out that a lot of times you just have to lay the cell phone down, lay the telephone down, whatever it is that, that, that's occupying your time, whatever it is that's, that's um, captivating you. Sometimes you just have to say, not right now, not now. I've got an assignment in the name of Jesus. It's not easy, especially if, you, if you're expecting um, an important phone call or, is, or if you're expecting someone to come over or something. Sometimes it's not easy to turn it down and spend that time. So this is the reason why my time with the Lord is in the morning. I get out of the bed in the mornings. Uh, the, the house is quiet. You know, everybody is settled, probably somewhere in the house, and I head for the bathroom. And there I will get my word and read the word, and then I begin to ex exalt the Lord and worship the Lord. And, and, and then when I'm done, then, you know, I can walk out knowing that I've already given the Holy Spirit first place in my life. And a lot of times I don't come to the Lord begging. I don't say, oh, Lord, give me, give me, give me. I find out one thing that you and I can do. If we get with the Lord and begin to tell him who he is in our lives, Lord, you are my rock. You are my fortune. You are my refuge. You are my um, strength. You are my joy. You are my fortress. You are my lily of the valley. You are more than conqueror in my life in the name of Jesus. Today, I submit totally to you. When I begin to lift him up, when I begin to tell him who he is in my life, things begin to just move away, begin to just clear the way. And I'm beginning to see clearly. I'm beginning to think clearly. I'm beginning to feel in my knower that it's going to be all right in the name of Jesus. Jesus, why? Because I position God in my day. I said, Lord, this is the day that you have made. This is the day that you have given me. Lord, I welcome you in my day. 
Lord, take full control of me in your day in the name of Jesus. I release myself to you in the name of Jesus. And I thank you for the blessings that you have bestowed upon me and that you are going to bestow upon me. I thank you for my children and my grandchildren and my spouse and my surrounding um, relatives and surrounding loved ones. I thank you that there's an edge of protection around about them. Thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And I begin to worship the Lord. The other day, um, my daughter called me and she told me, she said, I got um, a really, really big tip. And she was out, someone was going around and they were just giving big tips to, 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 to small, um, you know, stores and, and, and um, small um, businesses. They were just bringing, you know, just leaving a thousand dollar tips and however much. And, and she was... Her business, um, the people she worked for in that business, their business was chosen that day. And she was, um, you know, just filled with joy and just so elated and, and happy. And I, I begin to thank God that she finally found a job that she feels happy in. And I begin to speak that no weapon formed against her will prosper in the name of Jesus. And that the joy of the Lord is, in, is her strength and that she will not forget to give God glory and give God praise in the name of Jesus. So that's where God wants us. When he said, come unto me, he's not telling you and me, clean up ourselves. He's not telling you and me, get rid of this. He's telling you, come and bring your worship, bring your praise and lift me up and watch me begin to do miraculous work in your life. Watch me begin to elevate you. Watch me begin to move you from here to there. Just watch. And so when you and I rest our case in him, when you and I learn to dwell in his presence, when you and I learn to, learn to just come unto him, he said, heavy laden, are you heavy laden? Um, or he said, are, are you yoked up? Are you having problem? What is going on with you? There is a God who is well able to deliver you and set you free. You just have to know this God that you serve. Do you know him? If you don't, I'm um, giving an invitation to come to know him in the name of Jesus and to just say, Lord, I receive you as my personal savior. Come into my life. Be Lord over my life. Help me, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And then you can go on to even say, there's strongholds in my life that I don't even know how to get rid of. And you present, you begin to come to him with all your yokes and heavy burden and watch him give you rest in the midst of the storm. In Jesus' name, I prophesy peace in your life in the name of Jesus. And I prophesy rest also in your life in the name of Jesus. A friend of mine recently, she went and got surgery and she was very scared. She, she figured, she, she began, negative things began to come out of her mouth. What if I do, what if, I, I won't even repeat what she said, but she began to just say negative stuff. I said, no, you don't talk like that. You are strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. You are going to rise up from that um, surgery bed. See yourself going through the surgery, getting it done, rising up to live that more abundant life that you so choose to live. But because of this symptom, because of this disease that has plagued you for so long, you was unable to live that life. But now God has made a way for the doctors to perform on you and to remove that weight, to remove that yoke. Now see yourself rise up in the name of Jesus, and see yourself moving on to live that life. So she got the surgery. She went through it with flying colors. She called me. She said, I'm so glad this is all behind me. I said, I knew it. I knew that whatever you was, you was prophesying out of your mouth, the negativities that was coming out of your mouth, I knew that you was gonna be a, you was gonna rise up from that bed. I knew nothing was gonna happen to you. You just had to believe it. You just needed to know that, okay, God, this thing is set. I position you, Lord, in the midst of this thing that's gonna take place on my body while I'm asleep. Father God, in the name of Jesus, this body, it belongs to you. 
You said that um, our bodies belong to you. It was bought with a price. It was bought with the price, the blood of Jesus. So, Lord, in the name of Jesus, as they are working on it, Lord, in the name of Jesus, let everything grow smooth. Raise me up when it's all over. Give me strength in the name of Jesus so I can run that race and do what you call me to do. See, we have to change our mindset, how we think about things, how we look at things. We can't keep criticizing. We can't keep condemning. We can't keep speaking negativity. we got to say, I don't care what it looks like. I'm going to speak life to it right now in the name of Jesus. I don't care what the doctor says. I'm prophesying healing in the name of Jesus. I don't care what the job says. I will not go without a salary in the name of Jesus because my Jehovah Jireh, who is God of all, looks and see everything He's going to make sure that his chosen are taken care of. So in the name of Jesus, I will always have food on my table to feed my family. And we will always have clothes in our closet to wear. We will always have the bills to pay in the name of Jesus. Because I'm going to say, Father God, I put you in charge of my life. I put you in charge of my family. I put you in charge of my bills. Why? Because you, God, you are well able to deliver me. You are well able to fix the situation surrounding me and my family. You are well able to heal me. You are well able, oh God, to redeem me from any disease or any infection. You are well able in the name of Jesus. And you, 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 you just have to tell the Lord. He already know, but he lied for us to remind him. So you said, you are well able in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I know someone had told me that something was going on with their foot and that it hurt so bad. I said, look at that foot and prophesy. Foot in the name of Jesus. Line up with the word of God. We he said in Isaiah 53 and verse 5, by his stripe I'm healed. Foot, you are healed in the name of Jesus. Line up with the word of God. He says in Numbers, I think it's Numbers 19 and 23, he's not a God that he should lie. So if he says by stripe I'm healed, my foot is healed, you begin to prophesy. And I told her, I said, speak to the situation. What did he say in Ezekiel 37? Dry bones, can you live again? He told Ezekiel, Ezekiel, do you know if these dry bones can live again? Ezekiel said, I don't know, Lord. The Lord said, you prophesy to them. You prophesy to the dry bone. When Ezekiel began to prophesy, he said, bones begin to come together, sit you together, flesh together. They begin to rise up. So you prophesy. Sometimes we don't need to call anyone because sometimes the prophecy that you want to give the other person or whomever you call may not be able to be as radical as you are. So sometimes you have to go to that situation with an attitude, with, with, with a warfare kind of attitude, a mindset like, listen here in the name of Jesus, I don't know who you are, but you better release me because the blood of Jesus is round about me. The blood of Jesus covers me. The blood of Jesus protects me. There's a wall between me and the blood. You can't and get past that wall unless my God gives you permission. So right now in the name of Jesus, move, flee in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Why? Because God is well able to deliver you, set you free, heal you, even your mind. You know, um, sometimes I see people walking and, and, and maybe they're going to the store. I don't know where they're going or they're just laughing. And I'm like, are they on the phone? What's going on with them? Or, you know, they're just, uh, sometimes they're just laughing because they lost their minds. You, you, you know, you got to say, mind in Jesus' name. God has not given you a spirit of fear, but he's given you power and sound mind. Mind, I don't know where you're going, but you come back in Jesus' name. Sometimes, is it a loved one in your life and they, they don't know how to pray that prayer? Then you prophesy and you believe that you serve a God that is well able to equip, deliver, and restore that mind back to right, rightness in the name of Jesus. You just believe God in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Not too long ago, I was sharing with the girls that... Um, Something one night came into my room. I was in a deep sleep. And, 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 but in, even in that deep sleep, 
I felt the presence of, of a darkness. It came into my room and, and it, it's almost like it touched me. When it touched me, I jumped. When I jumped, I realized some unwelcome guest had come into my room. Very unwelcome, just decided to come and touch me. I said, you better get out of here in Jesus' name. This is nighttime. I need to sleep. I don't really take a nap in the daytime. So you better get out of here. The blood of Jesus is against you. You're not welcome. I lay back down and I went to sleep and I slept like a baby. Who got time to do warfare at night? Who got time to, no, 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 no. This is the reason why I adorn myself with the salvation of God all day. This is the reason why I cover myself with the multitude of his, gra his glorious grace, grace all day. Because when night comes and I lay me down to sleep, I just want to sleep. No tossing, no turning, sleep like a baby because when seven, eight, or nine comes and my eyes are open, I want to be fully rested. Don't want to be up all night doing warfare, praying. No, 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 no. That's what I do in the daytime. That's what. And that's why all day long, no matter what you're doing, you're at, your, at the stove cooking the food. While you're stirring it, you're worshiping God. You may be doing the dishes. While you're washing the dishes, you're praising God. You may be putting a load of clothes in the laundry machine. You're giving God the glory. You may be walking your dog. Hallelujah, God, you are so good. You are worthy to be praised. You are my God. You are my king. You are my righteousness. Thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And you begin to worship him. You begin to praise him. You begin to honor him in the name of Jesus. There's a story that I have under the essay. And I will say, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I give you my, my line. I give you my essay shop. I give it to you, Lord. Lord, you send customers that they will not just look, but they will be buyers in the name of Jesus. And I begin to proclaim. I begin to declare buyers to the shop. I begin to pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus, light the pathway that leads to that shop so buyers will come in the name of Jesus. And you begin to speak over it. It may not happen, may not happen now, but as you begin to speak life into your situation, life into your business, life into whatever it is you're doing. Just mark it with the approval of God. Just say, God, you are well able to raise this business up. You are well able to raise this child up and deliver them. You are well able, oh Lord, to clean up this circumstance. But God, I give it to you and I'm going to walk away from it. And while I walk away from it, I will take this time to just worship you and pray you knowing again you are well able you are well able to do the job nothing is too big for you God nothing is impossible for you all I got to do is believe if you have faith as the grain of a mustard seed and believe God you can move any mountain in the name of Jesus so I be you begin to just prophesy I begin to prophesy. You begin to pray. I begin to pray. We begin to beseech God together. We come into agreement, whatever it is, and you watch that mountain move out of your way. But you just have to believe that there is a God and that is well able to deliver, to redeem, and to restore in Jesus' name. Let's continue on here. I think it's, um, it's John 1 and verse 12. But as many as received him, again, we're talking about well-able. As many as, we, as received the well-abled God, to them give him power, to, him, to them give he power to become sons of God. To them he gives power to become the sons of God. So you just have to believe that there is this God that gives you the power. In the name of Jesus. You know, I tell people all the time, I say, you know what? When Jesus returned back to heaven, when he ascended to heaven, he didn't take any of his gifts with him. He, he didn't take any authority with him. He didn't take any power with him. He didn't take the Holy Ghost. He left, he said, I must go. And if you allow me to go, I will send the comforter to you. So he sends the comforter, power, authority. He, 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 he just sends 
all of that. And, and you know what I tell people all the time? You just have to know you have got the power and you have got the authority in the name of Jesus. So you speak to it. You prophesy to it. What is it? You know, are you, are you sitting there and every time you move, pain just rocks your body and you just moan and groan with aches and pain and you're having a difficult time standing up because the pain is so excruciating. You call that pain. You say, spirit of pain, I'm tired of you. I am really tired of you. You come here. And you begin to use the word of God. You begin to prophesy. You get the word and you say, by his strife, I'm healed. So be gone with you in Jesus' name. The blood of Jesus is against you. I had aches one time in my body and pain one time. And my bad lower back was hurting me. And then I realized, wait a minute here. Where did this come from? So I begin to pray and stretch. Pray and move my, my limbs and, and pray and, 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 and command every ligament, every bone, every muscle to stretch out in the name of Jesus. And while I was stretching, there was pain. You know, the pain comes to stop you. It comes to paralyze you. But the God you serve is well able to straighten out your limbs. The God you serve is well able to straighten out your bones. He's well able to remove all those aches and that stiffness. You just have to continue. While you're doing it, you begin to say, Lord, I praise you that you're straightening out my muscles right now. I praise you that you're straightening in my bones right now in the name of Jesus. I worship you that every ligament is healed in the name of Jesus. So I begin to, to stretch and I begin to worship God and I begin to move my hands and move my feet and move my body and move my head from side to side all the time worshiping God. Don't you know it was long and that pain had to flee because it had no power against the word of God. It had no strength. It had no authority in the name of Jesus in the first place to be touching me because I personally, I belong to him. I give me him. I said, Lord, here I am. I don't know what you can do with all this, but I give me to you in the name of Jesus. Take me Clean me up and use me for your glory. Whatever you can do with me, Lord, whatever your will is for my life, give me the strength to do it. And you got to do that. You got to say, whatever, Lord, whatever. And, and just said, you have, you have it. You have all of me to use for your glory in the name of Jesus. And just know this one thing. You can't, you can't do the will of God being broken. You can't do the will of God uh, in a standstill place. Jesus didn't stay still. Jesus moved all over. He was all over the place. He was going here, there, declaring the word of God, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Everywhere he can go, he went and he did it. When it was time for him to go back to heaven, he said, Father God, I have done the work you have given me to do. I am finished. Everything that you told me to do, I have done it. And all the people that you have brought into my life, I have gotten them all except one. And he's telling me, I have saved them all, Lord. They are yours. You are for them in the name of Jesus. And so if God have an assignment for you, don't use sickness as an excuse. Don't use sickness as a setback. Prophesy to it in the name of Jesus. Don't let it domineer you. You've got the power. You've got the authority. And you've got a God who is well able to deliver you from it in the name of Jesus. Speak to it. Tell it to entangle you, to, to distangle you. Tell it to, to, to release you in the name of Jesus. If, if it got you all wrapped up and you don't even know how you're going to move about, say, release me in the name of Jesus. Loose me and let me go. And then you begin to straighten up. You begin to walk erect, very straight up in the name of Jesus. Why? Because you're not giving that thing any power to have you in a bowed over situation. You, 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 you can't minister all bent over. You got to straighten up in Jesus' name. And so that's why you and I, we got to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might in Jesus' name. I, I just believe in my spirit that I'm talking to somebody because right now, 
in my vision, I can see someone trying to get up from their couch. Don't give up. Keep rising up in the name of Jesus. That's it. Keep rising up. Keep it on. Keep getting up in the name of Jesus. Yes, that's it. Now you get that walker and you begin to walk. You begin to put one foot in front of the other. And you begin to step in Jesus' name. And I prophesy that as you walk in the name of Jesus, your, your steps will be strengthened. Your feet will be strengthened. You will be stronger in the name of Jesus. Why? Because under the obedience of the power of God's word, you have made an effort to get up. So in Jesus' name, I bless God for your obedience and I thank God that you have mount up by getting up off that couch. You have been sitting there for a long time. It's time to rise in Jesus' name. I command you to rise in the name of Jesus. I speak to that back too. You've been having that lower back pain a very long time and it has have you paralyzed. It has have you just, just unable to move the way you want to move. Back in the name of Jesus, I prophesy that you straight not by the power of the Almighty God in the name of Jesus. I command that weapon of back pain that is formed against you to loose you and let you go by the power of the Almighty God. You straighten up right now in Jesus' name. You're being touched by the power of the Almighty God. You're being loosed by the power of the Almighty God. Now you begin to jump around. You begin to bend over and touch your toes. You begin to twist from side to side. You know it's happening to you right now. Now you begin to praise God and don't ever allow that spirit of back pain to come back on you. Don't ever allow that spirit to torment you anymore. Begin to rejoice and say, I am free in the name of Jesus. I am free under the power of the Almighty God in Jesus' name. And you begin to skip and run around and give God the glory, give God the praise because you obeyed his word and you came unto him and you allow him to touch your back. So God is good and God is greatly to be praised and God is well able in the name of Jesus. Luke 22, and this is really a long scripture, so I'm not going to go all the way. It's from verse 1 to, um, to 32. These are, you know, notes that I had prepared. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. Satan is desiring to sift you as wheat. But the Lord said, but I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen your brethren. Listen, that back pain that you just got delivered from, Satan was trying to sift you as wheat. But praise God for the prayer. The fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. Praise God for Jesus. He said, but I have prayed for you. He, Jesus is right now seated at the right hand side of the Father interceding for you and me. If we just keep that in our heads and if we know that we can't go wrong, he is interceding for you and me in the name of Jesus. And his intercession is to heal and to deliver and to restore in Jesus' name. So you just have to know all the time forever until the rapture takes place, you just have to know and believe that there is a God who is well able to deliver and to heal and to restore in the name of Jesus. You know, the one thing that I dislike, and I really, really dislike it, I, I, I dislike when people, you know, they'll say, oh, yes, God, God touched my body. And then the next, uh, I don't know if he's going to do, uh, and then out of the next Part of, part of their voice, oh, you know, I've been praying to God to touch my finances. And then the next part, I don't know. I, I just, it just bothers me to a core. It just, it makes me want to run up a tree and never come down in the midst of that individual, to be honest with you. Because it's like you, 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 are, you, are, you are talking out of your mouth blessings and cursing at the same time. You're saying God is well able and then you're saying he's not well able. Which one is it? Whose report shall you believe? If you're praying for him to touch your finances, it may not look good today. It may not have looked good yesterday. You may have been praying a long time and it doesn't look good. Don't stop. Don't let what you see 
in the natural interfere with, with what's going on in the supernatural. God is working. God is doing a new thing. God is up to something. Don't give up in the name of Jesus. Be begin to continue to do warfare and begin to cancel any assignment that is trying to stop the blessings of God to come forth in Jesus' name. You know, in Daniel, where, um, I think it's Daniel 11, where um, Daniel prayed a prayer and the Lord said, from the first day you prayed that prayer, I heard you, but the prince of Persia came to stop it for three full weeks, for 21 days. Finally, Daniel was, was able to receive his blessing. Sometimes you're praying, and sometimes the blessing is not that far, but there's a situation that's trying to hinder it. There's a situation that's trying to stop it from coming to you. Just say, God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that the blessing I've been praying for maybe last year, Maybe earlier this year, however long you've been praying for it, God heard your prayer. Now, there's sometimes when God says not now, or there's sometimes God says no. Well, if God says no, I can go with that. If he says not now, I can go with that. But what if he says yes? It's there, but there's some prince of Persia trying to stand in the way to prevent your blessing. That's when you begin to do warfare. That's when you begin to prophesy. That's when you begin to say, loose my blessings and let it, let it go in the name of Jesus. It is mine. I claim it in Jesus' name. And you begin to claim it. You, be, you begin to call it forth. Whatever it is, finances come forth now in Jesus' name. And you, you, you kind of like be stern about it. Don't be puny. Don't be weak. Don't be like, come on now. Come on. No, 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 no. You say, come forth now in Jesus' name. I've been waiting for you a long time. What's wrong with you? Why are you taking so long? And you begin to have an attitude in Jesus' name. And you begin to say, come, come on in Jesus' name. You claim it. You said, it is mine. It's now, right now, in Jesus' name. And you begin to just do warfare. That's your blessing that something is trying to stop. It may be a blessing of healing. It may be a blessing of stop the pain. Who wants to be in pain? I don't know about you, but I hate pain. I, I really don't like pain. And I don't think anybody else likes pain, for that matter. If you like pain, I don't want to be in your presence to be honest with you, because I don't like pain. You know, most time, as soon as the pain come, we go grab the Tylenol, we go, go grab the ibuprofen. Hey, nothing is wrong with that. I've done that myself. But sometimes it takes a little bit more than Tylenol. Sometimes it takes a little bit more than ibuprofen. Sometimes it takes the power of God. God, I'm swallowing down these pills, these two pills, or whatever, maybe swallowing down this one pill, Lord, to, to, to stop the pain. But while I take the pain, Lord, while I take the pill, Lord, you intervene in the name of Jesus. You shut it off. You shut it down. You stop it in the name of Jesus. I don't want it to come back when the when the, the, the effect of the, the Tylenol is worn off. I don't want it to come back. I want it to be gone in the name of Jesus. I want it to be removed from my body in the name of Jesus. So pain in Jesus' name, the blood of Jesus is against you. You be gone. You be moved from me in the name of Jesus. And you begin to speak powerfully to it. You begin to tell it, we are no bosom body right here. I don't like you, to be honest with you. So be gone. You are stopping what God has called me to do. You are standing in my way of doing the will of God. Be gone in Jesus' name. And then you get up and you begin to move about. You may be saying, but you don't know this pain is so hard, it's paralyzing me. Yeah, you still have power. You still have the authority. You get up and you begin to move, pain or no pain. Like I told you the other night when my back was hurting me and, 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 and was telling me, get in the bed, lay down. Uh-uh, no, I'm not going to bed with any pain in Jesus' name. You come upon me to stop me? No, if I go to bed with you, then I know when I wake up, you'll be there. Uh-uh, we are no friend. This bed is for me. It's not going to be shared with you and me in it. No, you get out in Jesus' name. You leave me alone. So I begin to stretch. 
and I begin to call on the name of the Lord every time I stretch. I begin to command my arms to be straight now, my body to be able to move, and I begin to cover me with the, with the power of the, of the Holy Ghost that everything about me, I got the power to move it in the name of Jesus. I'm able to move it. I'm able to go around and move it in the name of Jesus. So I begin to move. I begin to tell it, go in Jesus' name. Believe you me, it left. You know, faith takes action. You're hurting, try to get up. You're in the bed and you're having a hard time. Everything you can grab with every ounce of energy, you grab it. And as you are moving, say, God, you are well able in the name of Jesus. You are well able to do a work in me. You are well able to loosen my muscles. You are well able to loosen all these bones. They may be cracking. They may be creaking. They may be making noise. Who cares? Just as long as it's moving, just move in Jesus' name because the God I serve is well able in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I hope you're getting something out of it because I'm getting delivered out right now as I'm talking to you. You know, the Israelites in Numbers, which we started out in the beginning, Numbers 13, as they begin to murmur, God had to move them out of the way because they were infecting the other Israelites. Now God said, go up and spy out the land. And they went and they see these big, tall people. They probably had to strain their necks to look up at them. And they probably said, whoa, you, you are really big. You may be big, but I got a God bigger than you in Jesus' name. And he's able to stop you. That's why I said in the beginning of this program, be careful who you listen to. Be careful who brings sour notes to you, sour messages to you and dampen your spirit and knock you back down. Because as they brought these messages back to Moses and Aaron and as the other Israelites heard it, the Bible said in Numbers 14, they begin to cry all night long. They begin to mourn. They begin to say, would to God we were back in Egypt and would to God and they begin to complain and gripe. Who are you listening to? Who is bringing sour notes to you? Who is bringing negative messages to you? You know, there's a young man, Joel Olstein. I don't know if you know him. I listen to him sometimes. He wrote a book, Empty Out the Negatives. I bought that book and it has some really powerful words in it. Empty out the negatives. Be careful who you're listening to. Be careful who you're taking advice from. Be careful who you are, you are releasing your children to, to speak into them. If they're not bringing the glory of God and the power of God and the authority of God to you and tell you that there's a God that is more than enough and a God that is well able to heal, deliver, and restore you, then their words don't mean nothing. Their words are like negativity. Let it fall by the wayside. But if they come with the power of God and to come in agreement with you and the both of you can con come in, in agreement and, and confirm what you need prayer for and you both of you come together and pray, the Bible say, how can two walk together if they don't agree? If you both decide to come together, walk together and believe God for this thing, God can do a new thing. But if one is saying yay and the one other is saying nay, then there's confusion and the Bible said our God is not a God of confusion so you can't have confusion in the midst and that's why I said earlier it just bothers me when people one side of their mouth is saying blessing and the other side is saying curse no stand on the promises of God and believe him when he said in Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28 come unto me and bring your labor bring all your yokes and I will give you rest and I'm just paraphrasing it but he said come unto me bring it all I will give you rest I will take your yoke upon me and I will lay mine upon you and mine is easier mine is lighter and I will give you rest then you come to him and you declare, Father God, in the name of Jesus. And God already knows. That's what we have to remember. He already knows what we are going through. We just have to say, Father God, in the name of Jesus, this is me. 
things have happened to me and I have allowed myself to, to, to go through some things. I have allowed myself to be involved in some things that probably wasn't good or wasn't right. But Father God, I'm ready for you to come and clean me up. I am ready to surrender to you. You are well able in the name of Jesus. And when we believe God that he is well able and we begin to worship him, watch him. Watch him fix it. Watch him do it. You know, my daily routine is to always have a worship on my lips. Have a praise on my lips. And so I try to allow myself to be careful what I watch on TV. I try to allow myself to be careful what I listen to on the radio or whatever people are saying, whether it's on TV or someone is talking to me. And I try to be careful the books I read. So most of everything that I'm involved in is godly. And, and I do that because I'm in deliverance ministry. And nobody is more knocked down harder than a deliverance pastor. Oh, that enemy will try to come after you big time. But the Bible said the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. You don't have to be afraid of the enemy. You just know who you belong to. And you know that if the enemy try to come into your space, he's treading on sacred ground. So you said, devil, let me, let me remind you once again. I'm a child of the almighty God. He lives in me and I'm in him. You have no authority here. There's no foundation for you to stand upon in the name of Jesus. My God, who is well able to deliver me, is going to protect me from you in the name of Jesus. And then you know what? You don't spend all day rebuking him. You don't spend all day, uh, 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 you know, you, you have too much to do, really. To, 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 to spend all day rebuking him. No, no, no. You got to get back to God's assignment for your life. But one thing, you can't be wishy-washy. You can't be yay and then nay. You have to tell yourself, I am going to stand strong on the promises of God. And so in the name of Jesus, I'm covering you now with the blood of Jesus. I prophesy healing over you from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. I cover you with the blood of Jesus. I cover you that you'll be able to move and have your being in the power of God in the name of Jesus. I um, cover you with his blood. Every move you make, you're strong. Every swallow you take, you are strong in the name of Jesus. And don't be afraid. God is on your side. And God is well able to deliver you. God is well able to set you free. And don't go back and sit down. Keep moving. Keep standing. Know that God loves you and he will take care of you. And he's well able to take care of you and deliver you. Bye for now and God bless you and see you again. Amen.